Imagine constructing an aircraft so technologically sophisticated, so meticulously engineered, that it incorporates many of the identical components found in leading Western jets like the Airbus A320. Propulsion systems from General Electric and Safran, flight control architecture from Honeywell, radar systems from Rockwell Collins. On paper, every certification box is checked. Technically, it should be cleared to operate across international airspace, yet it remains grounded. That's the perplexing and frustrating reality confronting China's C919 commercial airliner. Despite being constructed with internationally certified components, despite years invested in meeting global safety protocols, the C919 just encountered a major obstacle. The European Union Aviation Safety Agency, ESA, recently announced a postponement in granting the aircraft its type certification. Originally anticipated much sooner, certification could now be delayed another three to six years. This wasn't merely a bureaucratic announcement, it generated global headlines. Some media outlets even ridiculed the jet, asserting it has no customers. But beneath those dismissive headlines lies a far more significant and serious narrative because this delay transcends paperwork or pilot qualification procedures. It's not just about propulsion systems or avionics. It's about who possesses the authority to determine which aircraft can fly commercially and which cannot. It's about power, geopolitics, and a global market that has been dominated by two manufacturers, Airbus and Boeing, for decades. So the fundamental question becomes, why is an aircraft packed with Western-approved systems still being obstructed? And more critically, what does this delay reveal about the future of global aviation? This isn't simply the story of one jet. This is a window into the intense geopolitical struggle over who controls the skies. To grasp why the C919's certification delay matters so profoundly, we must understand the genuine power structure behind modern aviation. It's not just about manufacturing aircraft, it's about obtaining permission to operate them. And that permission arrives in the form of something called a type certificate. A type certificate functions like a passport for airplanes. Without it, an aircraft cannot fly commercially in most nations. Even if it's impeccably engineered, rigorously tested, and demonstrably safe, it's grounded until one of the world's premier aviation regulators provides approval. In the aviation universe, only two regulatory bodies genuinely matter, the FAA in the United States and ESA in Europe. These agencies are the global gatekeepers. Their certifications are recognized and mandated by dozens of countries worldwide. When the FAA or ESA certifies an aircraft, it unlocks access to international routes, leasing markets, maintenance contracts, and airline partnerships globally. Without their endorsement, an aircraft is essentially confined to its home country. Think of it as an exclusive club with two doorkeepers. You can arrive with impeccable credentials, state-of-the-art technology, and a comprehensive safety record. But unless either the FAA or ESA opens the gate, you're not entering. And that's precisely the situation the C919 confronts right now. This creates what aviation experts call a regulatory empire. It means a small handful of Western institutions don't merely establish safety standards. They also influence who gets to compete in the global aviation marketplace. It's not necessarily malicious. These agencies are tasked with protecting passenger safety. But when certification timelines extend across years, particularly for non-Western aircraft, it raises difficult questions. Is this about safety standards or is it about market control? For China, this question isn't merely frustrating. It's defining the future of its entire aerospace strategy. China anticipated this challenge. Years ago, when it first commenced development of the C919, Beijing recognized that manufacturing a jet wasn't sufficient. If the aircraft couldn't achieve international certification, it would never compete with Boeing or Airbus. So rather than attempting to circumvent the system, China played by global aviation's established rules. They didn't cut corners or pursue independent development in isolation.
Instead, they designed the C919 around Western certified components, the same systems already operating in jets worldwide. The engines? They're Leap 1C models manufactured by General Electric and Safran, a US French partnership. These same engines power the Airbus A320 Neo and are certified by both the FAA and ESA. The flight control system? Honeywell, a major American aerospace corporation. The radar? Rockwell Collins. The fuel system? Parker Hannafin. Even the tires are Michelin. In essence, the C919 is not some obscure project assembled with unknown components. It's equipped with brand name, globally certified systems, many of which already operate over Europe and the United States every single day. And it wasn't merely about hardware. China also took diplomatic steps. In 2019, it signed the China-EU Bilateral Aviation Safety Agreement. This was intended to create a legal framework for mutual certification, meaning if China met ESA's standards, it could obtain approval for its aircraft in Europe. China fulfilled its commitments, both on paper and in engineering. And yet, here we stand. ESA is now indicating the C919 might still require three to six additional years of evaluation. So naturally, the question emerges, why? Why is an aircraft built to international standards, filled with certified components and covered by a legal agreement still being delayed? Why are the goalposts shifting? And more importantly, what's genuinely at stake here? Because this delay isn't just about one aircraft. It's about who gets to challenge the giants of aviation and whether the playing field is actually level. For decades, commercial aviation has functioned as a two-player game. Airbus and Boeing dominate global skies, dividing nearly the entire market between them. If you've ever flown commercially, chances are overwhelming it was aboard an aircraft built by one of these two manufacturers. And that's precisely what makes the C919 such a threat. This isn't just another regional aircraft. The C919 was engineered to compete directly with the Airbus A320 and the Boeing 737 the two most widely used passenger aircraft in the world. These are the workhorses of short and medium haul travel, deployed by major airlines on thousands of daily routes globally. If the C919 penetrates that market, even modestly, it could begin eroding one of the most lucrative duopolies in modern industry. That's why the certification delay raises suspicions. On paper, ESA's decision concerns safety evaluations and comprehensive systems testing. But examine it more closely and it begins resembling something more strategic, a stalling tactic designed to protect market share. Why? Because a certified C919 wouldn't just provide China a new export commodity. It would introduce a third major competitor into a tightly controlled space airlines, particularly in emerging markets, would suddenly possess another option, one that could drive prices downward, intensify competition, and erode the dominance Airbus and Boeing have enjoyed for decades. To use an analogy, imagine a global restaurant industry where only two chefs serve virtually all meals. Now a third chef appears with recipes equally refined, ingredients from the same suppliers, and a kitchen constructed to international code. But the health inspector keeps delaying his license, insisting he requires years of additional reviews despite using identical ingredients as everyone else. At some point, it ceases to resemble inspection and begins resembling protection. That's the genuine tension here. The C919 isn't just an aircraft. It's a potential disruptor to a global power structure. And for Boeing and Airbus, every year the C919 is delayed represents a year of competitive breathing room. But while the West hesitates, China isn't sitting idle. Even without ESA approval, China already possesses a massive runway to launch the C919, and it begins domestically. While Western critics suggest the C919 has no customers, the reality is far more strategic. China is the world's second largest aviation market today, and it's projected to become number one by 2042. According to the International Air Transport Association, the country will require over 9,000 new aircraft over the next two decades. 
That represents nearly a quarter of all global aircraft demand. So even if the C919 never operates in Europe or North America, it doesn't need to. Its home market alone is sufficiently large to sustain production for years. And here's the critical detail. The C919 is already certified by China's Civil Aviation Administration, meaning it can operate freely within Chinese airspace. This provides COMAC, the manufacturer behind the jet, a clear pathway forward, serve Chinese airlines first, accumulate operational experience, and build domestic credibility. Major Chinese carriers like China Eastern have already placed orders and operated the C919 on commercial routes. Every successful flight strengthens its credibility, but the momentum extends beyond China's borders. Countries across Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, have expressed interest in the aircraft. These are rapidly growing aviation markets that may not wait for EASA's endorsement. Some are already negotiating bilateral agreements with China to recognize its certification independently. In other words, the C919 isn't merely flying into Chinese skies. It's establishing a new regional aviation ecosystem, one that doesn't depend on Western regulators for approval. So while critics dismiss it, China's aviation strategy is quietly expanding. The C919 may be excluded from some runways, but it's already cleared for thousands of others. And that fundamentally changes the competitive landscape. Here's the irony. While Europe delays China's C919, its own aviation giant, Airbus, is more dependent on China than many realize. Since 2019, Airbus has surpassed Boeing as the global leader in commercial aircraft deliveries. And a substantial portion of that success has been fueled by one customer, China. Today, over 2,200 Airbus aircraft operate in Chinese skies, comprising more than half of China's commercial airline fleet. That's not a minor relationship. It's critical. Airbus sells more aircraft to China than to any other nation globally. But the relationship extends deeper than sales figures. Airbus has established six joint ventures in China, covering everything from composite materials to component design. And in Tianjin, Airbus operates a final assembly line, producing up to six aircraft monthly. That facility alone is vital to Airbus's global supply chain, helping them meet demand and maintain their lead over Boeing. So here's the risk. By stalling the C919, IESA may be engaging in a dangerous game because China holds substantial leverage. If Beijing decides to shift new aircraft orders toward COMAC, it doesn't need public announcements or formal bans. It simply needs to quietly approve more C919 orders, delay Airbus purchases, or steer domestic airlines toward local manufacturers. Over time, that could significantly impact Airbus's revenue and production targets. Consider the imbalance. Europe is preventing China's aircraft from flying internationally while its own aircraft fly increasingly throughout China. That's a precarious asymmetry. The question becomes, how long can Europe afford to delay the C919 without triggering retaliation that damages its own aerospace industry? Because in aviation, skies may be global, but markets are political, and China, with its expanding fleet and enormous demand, holds more cards than ever. This isn't the first time China has encountered obstacles after adhering to established rules. If anything, the C919 delay feels like a familiar chapter in a longer narrative, one where China attempts to integrate into global systems only to face sudden roadblocks, often precisely when success approaches. Consider space exploration. In 2014, China and the European Space Agency announced plans for ambitious joint missions. Deep space exploration, shared astronaut training, potential collaboration aboard China's space station. European astronauts even trained in China and learned Mandarin. A new era of cooperation appeared imminent. But in 2023, everything collapsed. ESA withdrew from the partnership, citing financial and political pressures. The collaboration never materialized, 
or go further back to the early 2000s. China attempted to participate in Europe's Galileo Satellite Navigation Project, a high-precision GPS alternative. Initially, the door was open. China was invited to contribute funding and technology. Then came U.S. pressure. China was quietly excluded, denied meaningful access. The result? China developed its own satellite system called Beidou, now fully operational and used by dozens of countries. Meanwhile, Galileo remains incomplete. These examples reveal a pattern. When China approaches Western-led systems, cooperation often transforms into exclusion, particularly when China's participation could shift power balances. And now with the C919, we observe the same playbook delay, deflect, protect the status quo. But history also demonstrates this. When China gets locked out, it doesn't surrender. It builds alternatives. From space to satellites to semiconductors, China has learned that dependence can become vulnerability. And each time it's been excluded, it's returned stronger, with homegrown systems that eventually compete with or even surpass those that blocked its entry. The aviation world might be witnessing the beginning of that same transformation again. So how will China respond to the C919's international roadblock? Not with public outrage or diplomatic protests, but with strategy. First, by reducing dependence on foreign engines. Currently, the C919 uses Leap 1C engines manufactured by GE and Safran. But China isn't stopping there. Comac is already collaborating with the Aero Engine Corporation of China to develop the CJ-1000A, a domestically built engine designed to replace the Leap in future C919 models. Once operational, China will no longer require foreign propulsion systems or foreign certification for its core technology. It's the identical playbook China employed with the Beidou satellite system and Huawei's semiconductor technology. When access is denied, independence becomes the mission. Second, by leveraging its massive market, China doesn't need to declare trade wars. It simply needs to shift airline procurement preferences, rewarding COMAC with increased domestic orders while gradually reducing Airbus contracts. The message is straightforward. Access to China's booming aviation market comes with expectations of reciprocal treatment. Third, by expanding aviation partnerships beyond the West. Through the Belt and Road Initiative, China has already established aviation cooperation with nations like Malaysia, Indonesia, and Thailand. Many have signed mutual certification agreements, meaning they're willing to recognize China's aviation standards without awaiting ESA or FAA approval. This could create a parallel ecosystem a world where Chinese certified jets operate across Asia, Africa, and parts of the Middle East, bypassing traditional Western approval routes entirely. And finally, by playing the long game. China won't rush or retaliate loudly. Instead, it will continue improving the C919, refining safety, reliability, and cost efficiency. Just as Huawei weathered chip sanctions and Beidou replaced foreign satellites, the C919 can earn global trust through performance and persistence. Because ultimately, the delay might actually backfire. It may slow the C919 in the short term, but it could accelerate China's drive toward complete aerospace independence. The C919 is more than a commercial aircraft. It's a statement of intent, a signal that China is prepared to challenge old systems, construct new ones, and rise above the limitations others attempt to impose. The question isn't whether China will eventually fly the C919 internationally. The question is whether by the time Western regulators finally approve it, the global aviation map will have already been redrawn. And China, having built its own pathways, its own partners, and its own engines may no longer need their permission at all. Because in the end, the greatest threat to a duopoly isn't competition from outside. It's realizing that the world has learned to fly without you.